Now we're going to hook up the ground to everything. We're going to start with putting the speaker out of the way. We're going to start with the binding post. Uh, for this, like I said before, I like using as little wire as possible and making it as direct as possible. So I'm going to take the whole piece of black wire, which is about five or six feet, and we're just going to start at one end. And pretty much the same thing we did before with the positive binding post. Strip this back. I'm going to take some of these components off so they don't get hot. That one will probably be okay. And I'm going to set it in here just so that it doesn't move around on me too much. <coughs> for a minute because that sucker gets hot. so it doesn't melt anything else. All right, now I left this really long on purpose because we're going to feed one ground wire to everything inside the chassis. Real simple. Um, if you want to put a piece of heat shrink over this, you can. Ooh, this looks really hot. Not really necessary, but you can if you like to. <clears throat> we do have to put these parts back on. And these are the ones that become the uh, grommet for the chassis. Okay. So there's our binding post with our lead solder to it. <coughs> okay, now inside the chassis, we're going to fish the wire through first. Okay, get us our binding post. Then we have to put the washers. the washers and then the nut and there really is an excess of wire here this is way more wire than you're going to need um, you could cut off probably half or three quarters of this and still be fine but hopefully this is cooled down a little bit Tighten your binding post down. And since this wire isn't connected to anything else yet, we can really torque down on the outside and twist it around a whole bunch of times without worrying about kinking the wire on the inside. So I'm going to use <coughs> the pliers we had before to hold the nut on the inside. And again, you've got an adjustable wrench. I forgot to bring one, so we're just doing it with the pliers. And that's okay. Grab the nut. You can really torque on this hole. Okay, I'm really tight. And again, just make sure that your slot is facing vertically. So when you go to put any find any uh, spade wire connectors on there, 
just locked on there in the right direction. There you go, got your binding posts put in. Now, <clears throat> what I want to do is the same thing I did with the positive side of the woofers. I'm going to take the ground wire and I'm going to jump from one to the other. It's much simpler. And if you had the if you're going to use the XLR at the bottom of the plate, instead of this, you'd go to the XLR to here to here. Exact same thing. You're just replacing one connector with another, really. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this wire because it's way too long for what I need. But I need to go from here to the woofer to the other woofer and then have enough wire coming out the front to get to the ribbon as well. Because one ground wire to go, go to all the drivers. So I'm going to pull it through the front, grab my yellow wire, and pretty much just match up the length over here. So if I've got enough in here, give myself a little extra slack. And then come down, and I know I've got enough wire here to get to the ribbon. And then I'm just going to cut this off because it's already way too long. Okay. So now we got less wire to work with. <coughs> Alright, now we do the same thing. Basically, Strip the wire, make a little bit of a notch in there so that I can connect my terminals to it. Be careful you don't yank on it too hard because if you do, it'll just break the wire loose. So there you go. Make a nice little connection. We're going to solder that up real quick and we'll jump over to the other side. Since we already tinned the drivers, that's already done. I'm going to just tin the wire, get it down in place, solder them together. That's it. Quick and easy. I'm going to come over to the other side. I'm going to do like an S shape because I want this wire to come back out the front because we're going to the front of the chassis after this. So I'll just do like a little bit of an S shape and we'll strip it back right there. Put a little kink in it so I see where I need to strip it. There you go. That simple. Okay, now your woofers are hooked up positive and negative. All done. Simple, simple, simple. And then what you've got left is your positive and negative wires going to your ribbon. And that's where we're going to kind of end the wiring diagram, the wiring layout. Now we actually have to prep the ribbon. This is not my favorite part in the world, but unfortunately it has to be done. These ribbon drivers are very, very good, but one of the things that they neglected to do was seal them. So, having this driver placed inside of a cabinet, the entire seal around the outside of the ribbon and the holes where the screws go through let air through. So, we have to seal the ribbon so that it's airtight. And the simplest way I could come up with for everyone to do it themselves um, was to use some of the uh, AC ductwork tape. Very easy to work with, solid because it's aluminum, and self-adhesive makes it very, very easy to work with. And I'll give you a real quick rundown on how I did it. <coughs> Basically cut a piece a little bit longer than your ribbon to start with. Okay. And what 
I did was I put the tape right up against the edge of the chassis of the ribbon and then you can kind of use your other thumb to create the crease line that you're going to need. Gives you the perfect spacing. Okay. Once you've got that, kind of bend this all the way to a 90 and you've got your crease line. So you can lay this down, bend it nicely. Okay. That basically replicates the flange. So once you peel the tape off, it's going to be sealed all the way from there up and around over top of the <coughs> over top of the screw heads that seals the edge the plastic piece as well as all the screws now the only thing you really got to be careful of is your terminals here you don't want the tape touching your terminals because that will short things out um, two different things you can do either cut the tape around the terminals which works but what I would recommend you do is very carefully take the terminals and bend them straight up just the outside two are the ones you have to worry about. It's easy. Even if you break this off, it doesn't matter. You got another one right there. But bend them up out of the way. That way the tape can lay down flat right up against the terminal. And you don't have to worry about anything shorting out. And you can see the terminals just like the woofers. The positive is the larger terminal. The negative is the smaller terminal. It's got it pressed right into that piece of plastic right there so you don't make a mistake your positive or negative. Okay, so now that you got your terminals out of the way, you can take your piece of tape. This is the hardest part of probably the whole build. The entire, this is the hardest thing, is getting the paper off the tape. Got to have a little bit of patience. Fingernails help. But if you can do this, you can do anything. This is the hardest part. Doesn't matter how patient you are. It still just doesn't want to work half the time. Okay, there we go. Once you get started, just peel the tape back. Now for me, what I did last time, it made it a little bit simpler, was to roll the tape forward, peel the paper back at a 90. That way you've got like a nice, clean, straight edge to work off of and try to pinch your tape down because you're going to really have to tuck this into that corner to get it in just right. So once you've got it, you basically just take it, line it up, okay, see so the paper gets in the way, line it right up with the inside edge of that crease and push it down. So now you've got your tape stuck to the back of the flange on the ribbon. Okay. Then you peel the tape away, or the paper away, and then very carefully, gently start in the middle, press it down nice and flat up against the edge of the ribbon. Okay, make sure you got it down in the crease pretty good. Be careful not to cut yourself. Yeah, don't cut yourself. This stuff's like a razor blade. It's a thicker grade foil than normal, so if you run your finger down this, it can cut you, so be careful. But yeah, just press it down real nice. Create a really good seal on all the different layers of the ribbon. I mean, there's one, two, three, four, five, five layers plus the plastic piece. So you definitely want that edge sealed nicely. Okay, and then take this and roll it gently across that edge. And see how this is gonna touch. So you're gonna wanna cut a notch there around the binding, around the terminal. But just take this go down and be careful when you press down on the screw heads you don't want to rip it just kind of leave it loose around the screw heads and make sure it's flush down to the flat surface on the ribbon okay take this piece you can even lift this corner up a little bit I did that before lift it up a little bit that lets you tuck this around the bottom edge okay basically wrap it really nicely get this edge nice and tight so that there's no air leaking underneath the tape around where the screw heads are. And again, if this gets too close, you're just going to want to just cut that part out a little bit. Just cut a little notch away from there and kind of peel it back. I got my car scissors in the little pliers. Wrap 
wrap that around nicely. And there you go. Just make sure your foil is not touching your terminal. That's the only thing that really matters here. As long as it's not touching your good. Make sure it's nice and tight all the way down to the flat surface on the ribbon. And you got one side of one ribbon done. So now you're going to turn around, do the exact same thing over here. and then try to peel the paper again. Sometimes it cooperates, sometimes it doesn't. And fold your paper all the way back. I'm going to move it up a little bit and it down too far. Kind of make sure you center it like I didn't do that time. There you go. Press it down so that it's attached to the ribbon. Peel the paper away. And then you can carefully wrap this side. I like wrapping this around a little bit, even if this part up here kind of lets go a little bit. That's okay because the rubber gasket that goes, the foam gasket that goes on afterwards, always kind of makes up that little corner anyway. Now Bob had suggested taking some of the uh, black silicone and kind of smearing it all the way around the outside edges. <coughs> um, you can do that if you want to. I wouldn't necessarily recommend it because if anything goes wrong with the ribbons and it really is a warranty issue, I don't know that they're going to want to take one back that's completely covered with silicone. So I didn't really like that idea very much. Um, this way, if something goes wrong, you can just peel this tape off. It's nothing. You know, it just peels right away. Uh, so, you know, that's kind of up to you. If you want to put silicone all around it, you can. But you're still going to have to silicone every screw head if you do that. Because they leak just like the, uh, just like the multiple layers will. Okay, so once you've got that, we're going to need another little piece of tape there, another piece of tape there, and this one will be ready to install. So I'll take the rest of the tape, which probably just cut this in half, should be good. <coughs> I'll wrap each end. And this one, the top and the bottom have a much smaller lip, so it's going to really cover pretty far onto the ribbon. This side it will be an issue, because if you go too far, you're going to wind up wrapping over top of the whole binding post. So this one you can actually go the other way. Start here, work your way down if you want to. But I like going around the lip first because that way you know you've got the right dimension. It's easier to uh, use the flange as a guide to make sure your uh, fold is the right spacing. hardest part of the build. Getting the paper off the tape. Okay. Now because this one's going to be right in line with the binding, I'm going to 
of the terminals, we're probably going to have to cut it short. You're not going to want to wrap it all the way around. It's going to be too much tape. So, get that stuck down in there. Now, before I peel the paper off, I'm just going to kind of eyeball this and cut off the excess because we really don't need that much tape at this end. That's better. That'll wrap around and not cover the terminals at all. Alright, so wrap that nice and tight. And then come up and over the edge. Right up to that black plank piece. And that thing is sealed. Now I noticed before that it created a little bit of a lip of foil here once in a while that you might see. But if you just take this and roll it back a little bit out of the way, once it's screwed down to the ribbon, you'll never see that. It'll just be kind of hidden behind the ribbon. So if you've got any foil hanging over, just roll it backwards a little bit and it'll disappear when you mount it. And the last piece. that left a little bit of a little excess there so I'm just going to take that and just kind of roll it back. Once you look at it from the front you can't see it anymore. There you go. That ribbon is sealed. <coughs> now I'm going to just poke the holes in it. The screws. We can mount this thing. Okay. <coughs> Don't forget to put your gasket back on. And you gotta pop these little centers out too, which is kind of a pain. They should have done that at the factory, but for whatever reason, they probably didn't want them floating around their place either. You gotta bust out these little black center pieces. Okay, you put your gasket back on over top of the foil. That's going to keep any air leaking outside of the chassis. The chassis itself we're not worried about, it's just the ribbon that was an issue. It itself would leak. And we don't need that, so. Okay, now it's ready to install. So now we get the speaker back over here. We've, the two leads we've got left are the black and yellow, and we're going to strip these and tin them. And tin the speaker terminals too. 
Uh, again, it doesn't matter which one of these two terminals you use, it won't make any difference at all. So. I'm just going to use the ones that are hanging down, it will be a little easier to get to, I guess. Terminals positive, smaller terminals negative. So it's on a piece of plastic too, in case you forget. Okay. 